Hello there, this is Peter Beckham, your Village Marketer. And today I want to talk about native advertising. With native advertising, the whole purpose is to make sure it doesn't seem to be intrusive, that it blends in with the surroundings around it, that it looks natural, so to speak, right? And therefore becomes more acceptable for people to check it out rather than something that's intrusive in your face and an obvious promotion or advertisement. That's what native advertising is all about. I mean, think of it as something you checked in your news feed on Facebook, for example. If you saw something in there, and by the way, they're there, they're called sponsored posts, right? They are examples, if they're done properly, of native advertising because they look, they have the look and the feel of an update that you'd normally see in a news feed. And therefore, they're more acceptable. And that's the whole boom around native advertising right now. Because people are interested in something that does not seem to be taking them away from what they would normally be doing. In other words, they don't feel interrupted by the ad. That's the secret of native advertising. However, like all things new, right, native advertising has got its share of critics. Some of these critics, um, quite rightly, are warning people about not trying to trick customers and viewers and readers into doing something. If you trick people into doing something, then you're going to lose their trust immediately. And the whole purpose of native advertising is to not just blend in with the surroundings, such as like a Facebook feed, but also to add value and also be clear in what it's trying to give to the person checking out the particular advertisement. Not trying to trick them in any way not take them to a page that they don't expect, for example. Because when that happens, boom, you lose everything. Now, maybe I'm going a bit overboard with this whole bit about the ethics and trust. But, I mean, think about it. This is not new, all right? These problems have caused the downfalls of, of all sorts of organizations in the past. Think about this. We've been down this track before. Telemarketing, the overuse of telemarketing. What happened? The introduction of do not call list, right? Email spam and the introduction of spam filters. I mean, these days, you're lucky to get your email into the inbox, even if you've got the best intentions in the world. Think about MySpace. You remember that? At one stage, they had too many ads. And what happened? Everyone went to Facebook. But let's look on the bright side. If the content we create is valuable and or entertaining, and the user knows which site they're going to go to, if they click on your ad, then they know who you are, what your brand is, what you stand for, and they can make an informed judgment about whether they click on that ad or not. And in that way, everybody wins. If you've done the right thing, blended your ad in, given value to that person, and been open, not trying to disguise the ad as something else, then you will win because people will respect what you're doing. And yet despite this, many people are saying that native ads are not going to survive. Really? I find that hard to believe. I mean, I could argue pretty convincingly that about half the content on Fox News is native advertising, right? And what about ABC News or ESPN? I mean, many times you'll see promotions on there in the form of native ads, and they're very well done, no doubt about that. But they're for theme parks and real estate. And these particular ventures just happen to yield about $2 billion a year to Disney Corporation. And Disney Corporation are the owners of ESPN and ABC News. So I think the future is pretty obvious, right? Native ads are here to stay. They may need to be adjusted over a period of time to make sure there's not too many wackos doing the wrong thing. But I can tell you the future looks bright for native advertising. See, I think if native ads offer value or entertainment, then they're a great way to promote your business. Truly a great way. Traditional advertising is under pressure. The old banner advertising is very much under pressure. I mean, I heard an interesting quote the other day from Solve Media, and they said that you're more than 475 times more likely to survive a plane crash than to click on a banner ad. Now, I don't know whether that's true, but it sure doesn't sound good for the future of banner ads, right? Because people have got banner blindness. They've seen it so often. Now, if you can manage the banners in a native advertising format, maybe you've got a winner there. You see, many criticize banners because they don't have a compelling story. 
whereas native ads can be more compelling and more storytelling. The problem with native ads is not whether they're compelling. The problem with native ads is are they relevant? Because you can see some awful examples of native ads that are compelling but completely irrelevant. Have a look at this one for an example. Well, here we are at BuzzFeed. I, I come to BuzzFeed to get ideas for um, blog posts, etc. And they're brilliant at that, all right? I mean, I know serious journalists probably wouldn't even think about coming to this particular site. But as an example of native advertising, this put me off. I mean, it's called 20 things we can only learn from dads, all right? Well, I'm a dad, so I found this pretty compelling, all right? So I came to it and had a look. Now, just check this out. Keep your elbows up the table. A little pain. Ooh, never hurts anybody. But, I mean, you can see what I mean. I mean, it's entertaining, but it's completely irrelevant to, one, 20 things we can learn from dads, but more importantly, Virgin Mobile. That's the brand that's doing this. I mean, it's completely irrelevant. What the hell's it got to do with Virgin Mobile? Okay. I mean, it beats the hell out of me. I have no idea. I visit that page because of the title. I mean, I live in a remote Thai village. So I'm not interested in Virgin Mobile. Okay. So you can see why that's a pretty poor example of native advertising. So there you go. That's why Virgin Mobile lost my interest and my trust, right? Now, by the way, did you know that it often takes more than 1,000 page views to get someone to click on a banner ad? Whew. I mean, if that's true, no wonder native advertising is booming, right? But just like content marketing, native marketing has to be able to achieve one thing, and that is to achieve conversations around the content. Creating these conversations is much better than trying to aggressively push someone down through your sales funnel. Okay, you must agree with that. None of us like pushy salespeople. But all of us respond to people trying to help us, educate us on the process. And we normally say thank you at the end of it, if they do it that way. Crazy, huh? But it's true. I mean, the main complaint that sales professionals get is that they interrupt people with content that people aren't interested in. And that's why native advertising has become so popular, because it's designed to specifically overcome that one particular issue. Because it blends in, because it adds value, people enjoy looking at it, people get involved with it, and if you do it right, they will click on your ad if it's done properly. Why? Because it's content of interest. Native advertising actually starts to go bad when the promoter, when the people creating the native ads do very little to disguise the fact that it's an ad. They're thinking more of any revenue and not adding any value. Once that happens, then that type of native ad will go down the chute very quickly. And people will lose interest, trust and belief in them as well. So there you go. And my takeaway is this. I think you should really get stuck into native advertising. It's booming and I think you need to work out how to use it, how to create it. And if you look in the blog post, underneath this video, or if you're watching this video on YouTube, go into the description box and click the link. It'll take you to that blog post. And you will find lots of very good examples of native advertising because it can be extremely beneficial. And not only that, I'll give you a recommendation as well in that blog post, okay? Look carefully for it because that recommendation will show you how you can maximize the opportunity to jump on board with this booming native advertising trend. Okay, that's all for now. Talk to you next time. Okay, bye.